Hello and welcome to this week's episode of I Think I'm Human 2. If you're watching on YouTube, I always say this, um, or I feel like I've been saying this a lot lately, the changes are changing. (laughs) We are preparing for our move to Texas and um, with that, we've been getting rid of a ton of stuff in our house. So, Hi, Hadley. Hi, baby. Yeah. We've been getting rid of a ton of stuff in the house and we've also been Um, I cleared out the studio space, so we are on studio chairs in the downstairs living room where a couch used to be, which is no longer because we are getting rid of a lot. So a quick little life update. We are obviously moving. We've kind of locked in that we'll be moving at the end of next month. Um, So we really only got about four weeks from today to get our shits together. Um... So today's episode, I've filmed a lot. I've had actually a couple of things. <sighs> Good old Hadley, our little German short hair pointer. She decided to eat an SD card mm-hmm, that had content on it. Mm-hmm. And normally I'm very good about getting the content off of my SD cards onto my laptop and onto a hard drive just in case anything like that happens. But I was so ahead on content that I didn't feel like I needed to do that right away, like day one. So like a week went past and nothing's ever happened. Hadley's never chewed anything. She's never peed in the house. She never poops in the house. She never does anything naughty. So I think she can kind of feel a move coming. A lot of people said that like dogs can sense that. Um, Also, when we don't give her full attention, she sits by the front door and whines, even though she does not have to go out. So if you hear her whining throughout this episode, that's why. Okay, so today's episode, I wanted to talk about therapy. Although, do I believe that everyone should be in therapy? Yes. But let's backtrack and let's talk realism. Okay, let's talk real life. Therapy is expensive. It's time consuming. It's scary. It's really hard to sit down with a stranger, get to know them. If you don't like them, then you're like, okay, well, I just wasted money and time and now I don't want to go do it again. Um, So I get the fear or the hesitancy around therapy, but I really wholeheartedly believe in it. Um, When my dad first passed, I knew right away I needed to get in with a therapist, but I knew it was going to take me some time because I was so anxious. I was like, I don't want to sit with somebody and talk about the worst day of my entire life. I'm scared. I just am not ready. I don't want to do that. And then finally, I got in with a good therapist. Mind you, I was looking for a therapist that um, specialized in PTSD and also grief. But then I also wanted a female. So there was like a couple things on my list that I was very, very stern on because I just, I love, men are great, but um, I feel like a lot of women just really understand women, one. Two, obviously I was, I'm still grieving. Three, I went through a very traumatic experience, so I needed somebody who understands traumas, and I was also going through, like, I I have replays in my head of, like, the exact morning that it all happened, and then I'll go into, like, full-blown scenarios of, like, what I should have done, and I'll, like, reenact things in my head of, like, how it could have saved my dad's life and whatever. So anyways, I want to talk to you guys about what I've been talking to my therapist about and you would be like, you're probably like, Catherine, this has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. Here's why. We haven't even really touched the grief. We haven't gotten anywhere close to the grieving parts of life. Right now in therapy over the last few months, I've been learning feelings. I've been learning boundaries. I've been learning sorry, not sorry. I've been learning so much and we'll touch on all of it I kind of want to I want to go over a couple different things and that's where I'm like if you don't have a therapist we'll go over what I've learned so far so the first thing we want to talk about is feelings and when we're born this is something I've learned we are only born with five feelings you are born with love joy fear anger and sadness those are your five Those are what you are born onto this earth with and those are the only things that you feel at its core. Every other feeling that you have is what's called a conditioned or a social feeling. For example, you poop yourself in the fifth grade. Everybody laughs at you, makes fun of you. Now you feel shame. You feel embarrassed because they made you feel past sadness. Like sadness is the core of that feeling. But embarrassment is 
because others are making you feel embarrassed. Meaning like if you were to shit yourself at five weeks old, that's not embarrassing. That's normal. That's a normal part of life. I mean, your parents just wipe it up and keep on keeping on. Nobody was laughing at you. So it was just a normal thing to do. Not normal in the fifth grade. So all the kids start to laugh at you. Now you feel shame. You feel embarrassment. Moving on to other feelings. Um, Guilt is one that's really, really, really big for me right now is I just feel guilty for so many things out there. I feel a constant weight of guilt on my chest of like, even when I'm not doing anything wrong or it's not, nobody's even making me feel guilty. They're not sitting here saying like, I don't know, you're rubbing something in my face, so you should feel guilty. I don't know. Oh, the girl crew has came to say hello. If you girls are going to be down here, you need to go get up in your chair. Hello? Get up in your chair. Go get up there. Go get up there. She wants mine. Go get up there. I told you this one's just bored. Okay, so when we're thinking of guilt, the word and the definition of guilt is court, right? When you go to court, they are determining if you are guilty or not guilty. So if you walk in there and you say, I feel guilty for not telling my parents this. I don't know, that you didn't get accepted into college. I don't freaking know. Um, Anything. A judge would look at you and be like, what are you guilty of? There's no conviction here. There's no crime being committed. Go home and just deal with your parents or whatever. You're not guilty. What you're guilty, where guilt comes in is you say, hey, yeah, I didn't want to tell my parents that I didn't get into college. So I told them to stand in front of my car. I backed it up and I ran them over. The judge would be like, "Mm, yeah, that's actually called murder and you're guilty. So guilt is not a feeling. It's a conditioned feeling. I mean, it, it, but it's not one of your core five. So when you get back into the root of your five, like where does guilt stem from? A lot of my guilt stems from sadness. For all my fellow book loving humans, I have something to share with you. I am very excited to share this with you. I recently heard about book of the month, which is a service that you can use to find your next favorite read. They curate a short list of highly anticipated monthly selections for you to choose from, and your pick is delivered directly to your door, which is amazing. One of my favorite parts about the experience is that the books are affordable, and their prices are actually much lower than other options for buying new releases, and the shipping is also free. So the Book of the Month editorial team reads through hundreds of titles and picks some of the top new books. We have an easier time choosing what to read next which is one of my favorite parts because indecision is my middle name. This also means that every book is a good book, so we can't really choose wrong because they're reading through hundreds and picking their favorites. If you've seen it on Instagram, I've been currently reading Just for the Summer, which is by um, Abby Jimenez, and it's the April book of the month. And it's full of like twist turns, but the writer is also living in Minnesota, which I thought was even cool. Like, even cooler. So, Book of the Month is sharing a code with the Human 2 readers. You're going to go to bookofthemonth.com and use code PASTEL to get your first book for only $5 this month. So, again, that is bookofthemonth.com and the code is PASTEL. And this will get you your first book for $5. Happy reading and be sure to DM me on Instagram with what book you start with. I'm excited to see. I feel sad like I've been in a time of life where I've gone to bed hungry because I couldn't afford food so I just went to bed. I couldn't afford to eat because my car was going to get repossessed so I didn't eat. I paid my car payment instead or or whatever the case may be. So now where I'm like living a life where I can eat out, I feel guilty doing that. I literally feel bad going out to eat because I'm like, dang, there's people out there that are really struggling. I feel such guilt. And I feel this weight on my chest of having to help so many people and all the time or like when I hear that someone in my circle is struggling with something, I feel guilty living life. I feel guilty living life that my dad's dead. I feel guilty. Like there's so much guilt that I have. I feel guilty moving across the country and not having a conversation with my family. That was something that came up in therapy and she's like, well, what are you guilty of? And I was like, I don't know. I just feel weird like not being able to call them and tell them like, and she's like, yeah, but why do you owe them that? You don't owe them any conversation. And furthermore, how odd would that be if you just called them out of nowhere and you were like, hey, I know everything fucking sucks between us right now, but I'm moving to Texas. They would be like, okay, do you want a gold fucking star? And then that would be an awkward encounter too. And I don't need their gold star. I just feel weird knowing that they found out 
online. Like I just feel weird about that, but it is what it is. And I felt guilt for a long time. And she was like, but what are you guilty of? And I was like, well, not telling them. She's like, that's not a crime. And I was like, "Mm, I guess that's true. So moving past the feelings of guilt, I think that was super important to find out when I was in therapy and going through it is figuring out like getting to your core five feelings is something something she's been trying to tell me to do. So when you're feeling embarrassment, shame, guilt, um, when you're feeling all these other things, um, get to like the core word, start to realize like, oh, okay, like, because then you can start to identify, okay, my guilt is actually sadness. And where I say that is like, I felt guilty, like that my family was finding out online. I felt uncomfortable. I felt guilty, but I'm like, no, at the core, my actual feeling is I'm sad. I'm sad that life is playing out the way it's playing out. I'm sad that I don't have the family that I wished it would have been. I'm sad that my dad's gone. I'm sad that I'm feeling like I'm honestly like ready to close out not just the state, but a lot of them. Like I'm ready to close that chapter and I'm sad. Whether, yes, I chose this. It's not like it was forced upon me sadness. It was a chosen sadness, but I'm also like, I know it's for the betterment of my mental health, my life, my future, my happiness, my relationship. Like it just, I don't know. But when I figured out that I wasn't guilty of anything and the right word that I needed to be saying is I'm sad. And then when you realize, okay, you're sad. Well, what are you sad about? Like I just said, all those things. Now I can start addressing what the real problem is and really being like, oh, like I'm not guilty of anything. Like it is what it is, but sorry, not sorry. My therapist literally reiterates sorry, not sorry to me each and every single session all day every day every single thing that I say to her she's like sorry not sorry and I'm like right there I feel guilty saying that sorry not sorry like yeah I'm moving to Texas and I'm not saying anything to my family sorry not sorry that feels weird that feels really weird um but I again don't owe them anything and again okay well if I were to play out the scenario and I were to come over and I were to sit down and say hey by the way we're moving to Texas and now we just stare at each other well, I don't need their stamp of approval. I don't need their congratulations. I don't need their their hate if they have hate to say with it. I don't need any of it. It's just a validation or an invalidation that is not needed no matter what is said. So sorry, not sorry you found out that on Instagram and TikTok I'm moving. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, this relationship has gotten to this point not just on me. It's not just my end. Like I wasn't the only one in this party that got us to here. So I don't owe anyone anything. I shouldn't feel because we're conditioned that family comes first and family this and family that and family, 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 family. At the end of the day, some people just don't have great families. Sorry, not sorry. Like, I don't know. It's just so odd. I wish it was different, but it's not. Another thing that we've been learning is boundaries. And when I learned the way that she explained boundaries to me, it kind of changed my view on things. So for example, when you think of everybody as a store, okay, everyone in your life, you've got a store. Think of yourself. What are, what are you? Who are you and what do you provide to others? You might be a Hobby Lobby for all creators out there. Everybody swarms to you and you're a very creative soul. But when they need something serious, like, I don't know, say the apocalypse is coming, right? Nobody's going to go to Hobby Lobby. Everyone's going to go to, like, the needs store. I don't know, the grocery store. Um, And, like, the... Okay, she's... It's hard for me to, like, reiterate this, but, like, in her words. Okay, so every person has their own store and, like, you are your own storefront. For myself and for my friend group... I she described me as a target she was like basically what it sounds like is you're the person that a lot of different people can come to anytime you're always open you're always giving you're always you've got something for somebody every day everywhere and you're a target I said okay and she said here's what a boundary looks like target closes their doors at 7 p.m mm-hmm okay perfect Target also makes billions of dollars. I said, okay. Target also can donate millions of dollars to whoever they want to donate. Mm-hmm. Okay, but a kid comes in or an adult comes in and decides to steal 
a seven dollar candy bar okay you can now kick them out even though you decided to donate millions of dollars and you don't need that seven dollars you still have the right to say you are no longer welcome in my store and I said "Mm, that's true okay and then also let's go back into thinking other people are stores we all might be targets to ourselves right we all might be a Walmart we all might be some sort of store where you can get everything Some people might not be. You might just be a Hobby Lobby, which is great. Hobby Lobbies are amazing for a lot of people. You're like the creative juice for everybody. You're just always a lighthearted, loving, creative, amazing person. But you're like, I'm just like, you're the fun person. You're the fun friend. That's okay. There's some people that are the hardware stores. They are the, they just want to get shit done. They're the hard workers. They're in and out. Like they don't really want to hang out. They're not really people that you go to for Hobby Lobby type finds you you go there when you really need stuff some people are Barnes and Nobles where they're very introverted all they want to do is read they want to hang out on their own and they want calm they want peace they want quiet you go to them when you just want to have a nice dinner with a friend in their house watch a movie and go to bed like every friend is different and every type of person is different but you but I I identify as a very robust human being I'm that friend that can sit on the couch and do nothing with you I'm that friend can, that can rally all night long well not anymore I'm just a very robust robust person and that's why she describes me as a target so figure out who you are and I think that will also help you decide like when you start to think of yourself as a store you kind of understand like who you are as a person more it's kind of crazy then my therapist was like when you start to think about other people and other like when you're like for example my brother there's a brother and I that are just no longer communicating and she was like, do you, what do you need from him? What do you want from him? And I was like, I don't know, just like a normal relationship. And she was like, okay, well, what is your normal relationship? Are you guys friends? And I was like, well, no, not really. Like we're siblings though. And she's like, okay. She's like, how often do you see each other? And I was like, mm, I don't know, like holidays, big stuff. Like, I don't know. He's not like the brother that I call up and I'm like, let's hang out. I would love for that to be, but it's just not like that. She said, okay, let's label him a Pokemon store. I said, okay. And she said, how often do you need Pokemon cards? I said, I don't know, very, very, very rarely. And she said, okay, say once every 10 years, you get to decide when you want to go to a Pokemon store. Maybe you never do. Maybe you want to order them on Amazon and you move along from that store and you never need that store. It doesn't mean that that store is not an amazing store, an amazing storefront for a lot of other people. And he fulfills a lot of other people's needs, but he's no longer filling yours. Why are you going to continuously walk into a Pokemon store and waste all of your time and walking around and doing nothing but walking out empty handed? And I was like, well, because it's my brother. And that was where I was getting tripped up. She was like, that's fine if you want that relationship. But if you've tried for years and nothing's going well, it's okay to just say like, you're a great and amazing storefront for a lot of other people. But I have no needs right now. I like You come into my Target and you're constantly taking things from me. You're not even purchasing them. But I have, it's just, it's hard. It's hard when you start to think of yourself as a storefront. It's very interesting. I don't know. I think I'm just going on a ramble here. And you're probably like, what the fuck are you even saying, Catherine? Another thing that I was really struggling with the last like few weeks is stress and um, life changes and all of that stuff. And she was like, stress and distress are two different things. And when you start to understand that like, Me moving across the country is stressful, 100%. Do not desensitize that. But it's something I chose to do. It's something I get to do. It's something I'm blessed to be able to afford, to be able to handle, to be able to partake in, all of that. That's stress. Distress is I lost my job. I'm getting kicked out of my house. I have to move across the country because I can no longer afford to live in Minnesota. I don't know where I'm going to live in Texas. I'm moving down there because my family's there. I am so distressed. It's not even funny. I have nothing to put my pieces together. Stress and distress are two different things. And she said, when you start to get into a stressful mindset, just say, I'm stressed, but this is not distress. This is still okay. Because you want to validate your feeling. You are feeling stressed and that's okay to feel that way. But you also want to calm that feeling of stress and by saying I'm still blessed for example I have to go to the gym versus I get to go to the gym I am able to move my body I have the time in my day to go to the gym I have the money in my bank account to afford the gym I have the gas in my vehicle to go to the gym 
so many different ways that you can look at stuff like that. I have to make dinner. I have a family to feed. I have to make dinner versus I get to make dinner for my family. There's so many things. Yes, those things are stressful. Making dinner, constantly doing that, going to the gym. Those are all things that you're like, damn, this sucks. This is stressful. Like adding this all into my day. This is stress. Like those are all valid things to go through where you're like, oh, I'm kind of stressed out today. Like I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. But when you start to think of it as like, oh, this is actually like how many other people can say that they can afford this willingly they can do this easily they can choose this like there are some people that don't get that option um so really starting there another thing that she had taught me is let's talk about help us females we all want help okay what does help look like to you i don't know okay then how the fuck is your partner gonna know if i were to say Raphael, can you help me okay sure help with what just help okay So then he decides to go outside and rake the leaves. And then I say, what the fuck are you doing outside? We need help in the house. The inside is a disaster. We have people coming over for dinner. Okay, what do you need my help with? I don't know. Look around. And I get it. A lot of women are like, hey, like it's our house. It's not just my house. How am I looking at a mess? And I know what to do. But you're looking at the same mess and you have no idea what to do. One, we're different people. Every single person, whether the same blood, no, same genetics, same marriage, no matter what, it doesn't matter. We are all individual humans with individual eyes, with individual interpretations, with individual hearts and individual brains. And we get so caught up in, well, we're siblings. Like, how do we not see the same thing? We went through the exact same scenario. How did you take it that way and I took it this way? Well, we're married. Like, we live in the exact same house. How do I see this mess and you don't see this mess? How do I know what to do and you don't know what to do? Because we're wired differently. Because our glasses, my vision is his, is not his vision. So when we get past that interpretation and we just realize, like, okay, if I'm going to ask for help, I need to know what help looks like. I can't just say, Raphael, come help me. He's going to be like, okay, help you with what? I it's so much easier if you know what you need help with which takes a couple of minutes sit down with yourself and say for two three minutes what do I need to do today what makes me successful today and she's also explained like different days are gonna have different things for example today I could be totally fine and success to me is filming this podcast episode um getting dinner on the table and spending an hour of uninterrupted time with my dogs okay those are my top three things to make this day successful. Tomorrow I come down with the flu. I've got the stomach bug. I'm throwing up everywhere. Those three things that I did today are not going to help me tomorrow. Tomorrow's success list might be eat some saltines and get an hour rest, get an hour nap. That's going to make me successful tomorrow. Every day is a different successful day. So if you sit down in the morning, you're like, what do I need to do today to help me be successful? Some people it might be I don't know, journaling for 10 minutes in the morning. Some might be hitting the gym. Some might be getting ready and going to dinner on time and not being late. Everybody's success is going to be different. But when you know what is helpful to you to make your day successful, it changes things. And then also it helps you communicate. Okay, so I know that I have to get this, this, and this done today for me to feel good about my day. All right, well, I need my husband's help here. All right, he can help me do the dishes um he can help take the girls upstairs and keep them quiet while I film this podcast episode they're right literally right there my success today was filming this episode I literally said to myself I have to film a podcast episode I got to get it up okay so I say Raphael can you help me be successful today he'd be like sure how well if I don't know how and I'm just like well I got to be successful can you help me he's like well how I'm like can you make sure that the dogs are quiet while I film this episode Right there, me knowing my successes and knowing how my partner can help me, whether it's your partner, your children, your coworkers, figuring out how to articulate what you need and how to communicate what you need is so important. And it's life changing, truly life changing. I'm not sitting here saying I'm perfect. It is by no means easy, easier when I take my medication. (laughs) But it's like we always say like we need help. We need help. We need help. And then when it comes time, people are like, well, what do you like? I used to do that all the time with my mom. She'd be like, I just need help. Okay. With what? She couldn't say with what? So then we wouldn't help. And then she would freak out even more. Nobody helps me. I do everything, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I've now known that like, I start doing that where I'm just like, yeah, nobody helps me or you're not helpful. 
And Raphael's always like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm constantly doing stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, but not what's on my list. And he's like, well, what the fuck's your list? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't even have a list. I don't even know what I could. I couldn't even tell you what my list is. So learning those things and like starting each and every day with a little simple list of in your head, like your top five things that you have to get done that day that will make you feel like you had a successful day. And I had said to her, I was like, how do you just start doing that? Like, how do you get in that routine? Because my life growing up was chaos. I never lived in a calm, quiet routine household. I've never been that girly. My family's never been that family. And now as an adult, I'm begging to know what consistency looks like. I am crying to know what a routine looks like. I would pay big fucking bucks to have motivation. I just wasn't raised with it. So I don't know what that looks like. I wake up every single day and I'm like, do I know I need to pull out my journal and my planner to have a successful day? Yes. Do I do that? Not every day. And then those days go to shit. So I'm like, I literally asked my therapist, I'm like, how do you get in the routine? She's like, you just have to do it. When you get out of your mind and you get into your body, that's another huge life change is when you stop overthinking, when you stop thinking about the future. Why am I worried about 5 p.m.? It's 11 a.m. Why am I worried about five months away? It's today. Why am I worried about what I said wrong to the grocery store attendant lady that I'll never see again? That as long as I wasn't rude, who cares if I said something stupid? Like, haha, thanks to you too. Have a great day. Like, I don't know. There's like, how many times do you say when like a server's like, mm, enjoy your meal? And you're like, thanks, you too. And you're embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? They hear it all the time. Move along. Why am I thinking about that moment? That was two years ago. Why am I still thinking about that moment? Why am I still bringing up stuff that's happened with me and a ex-friend in my brain? That friend's no longer in my life. Why am I stressed? Why am I worried? Be in the here, be in the now. And when you get out of your mind, it really starts to help you get into your body. And what I mean by that is when, you know, like when they say when you wake up in the morning, your mind hasn't fully kicked in. So if you just sit up and get up out of bed, that truly helps spark you to like stay out of bed versus if you were to like be in bed and you just like hit off on your alarm and you keep laying there, then your brain finally kicks in and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm tired. I want to go back to sleep. I'm going to go to sleep for a couple of minutes. Then you oversleep and then you have no motivation to get up. And then when you do get up, you're like, you're just groggy, you're slower. Like that's a real thing. When your mind is not fully there and your body kicks in, you get straight up and you have a different kind of a day. Or like the times where you're standing on the edge of the dock and you want to jump in, but you don't. And then you like slowly crawl into the lake and it's really freaking cold. And then you're like, oh, I hate this. It's a way different experience than just jumping straight in and you warm up really quick. When your mind stops and your body takes over, instincts kick in. And when your instincts kick in, it's like, it's like the time when shit goes wrong, like when my dad was dying and you don't know what to do, your mind literally stops. I wasn't thinking about me saying thanks you too to a server a year before. I was in the moment and I was in the now and I was present in that moment. There was nothing else going on in my brain other than my instincts kicked in to save a life. And I know that that's very drastic, but like if we were to be able to, if we were, if we were able to figure out how our brain works and how we can mute it when we don't need it going that would change your day. If I can stop overthinking and I can say, oh, let me get into my body. Okay, let me start doing this today. Let me actually just like start, I don't know, cleaning a window and turning your brain off. Your body just reacts. It goes into gear. Like you just kick in and then you start doing more and then you're okay, you're cleaning window. And now next thing you know, you're vacuuming and then you look around and your whole house is clean and you're like, oh my God, if I would have just gotten out of my mind on the couch sitting there like, dang, I really got to clean this house. It's an absolute mess. I can't believe this. This sucks. Oh my God, I got to think about, I'm going to think about anything else. And then you start thinking about, oh, I'm kind of hungry. Then you go out to eat instead or you go pick up McDonald's because you're so in your head about cleaning the house. But as soon as you turn the mind off and you get the body going, it's crazy. It's crazy. That was another thing that she had just said. And I know I I went on like a big rant there, but it's so true where like in the morning, I'm, I'm just like, I have to think about getting my journal and I want to get to the point where I get in the habit where I immediately open my eyes I don't check my phone I think that's another really big thing is a lot of us in this generation we immediately check our phones and then I I um I was listening to this podcast I want to say it was Mel Robbins and she was talking about like the times of the day and the first stage of the day should be you time and 
that is not including your phone. Like you time is whatever that means to you. As soon as you grab your phone, you're going out of you time and you're going on into them time. And them time is not, you're not, you're done. You're done. As soon as you check that phone and you get onto social media and you scroll on TikTok, you have lost the time of the day for you. You can no longer get up and journal in the same mindset that you would have. It's just, it's, it's just different. I don't know. It's actually a very good episode if you want to listen to it. I want to say it came out at the beginning of this year, right around New Year's day so early January um and it's very powerful it's very powerful message about like the times of the day and what's you and what's not you time and anyways so I know I've just gone ape shit on y'all but I wanted to just like express to you guys the amount of things that I'm learning and why I really 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 believe in therapy and why I still encourage everybody to always go um Again, I'm well aware that therapy is a privilege. I'm well aware that it's expensive. I'm well aware that it takes a lot of time to find a good one. Um, When you call your service provider, so whatever insurance company you have, when you call them, you can kind of like ask. And then when you start, say, for example, they're like, okay, yes, you're covered here, here, and here. Like, here's your clinics. Okay. Then you call the clinic and you say, hey, I literally said, hi, my name's Catherine. Like, I'm looking for a therapist. I'm looking for a female. I've got grief and PTSD um, from a traumatic loss. Past that, I don't have, like, PTSD symptoms. Like, I don't, I don't know. It was just, like, the best phrase that I could say at the time. I was like, I do social media for a living. So, I need somebody who's, like, kind of young enough to understand social media. And they paired me with a therapist by me just explaining like a little bit of like who I am to the receptionist. She was able to be like, oh, like I actually feel like you would fit best with this person. And I clicked with her right away. I literally love her. Um, My therapist literally held up like a little baggie and she was like, you're allowed three fucks a day. Three fucks a day. What are you going to spend them on? And I was like, that's like a great question because I don't know what tonight's going to bring. Maybe I need all three fucks tonight. So why am I going to spaz that my dog wants to go out a hundred times today? I'm not going to like let that get me because that's not a fuck that I have to give right now. I need it to be a real thing that I want to give a fuck to. And when you start thinking that like, okay, where am I going to put my energy? When you start thinking of like, okay, how many fucks do I have to give as how much energy do I have to give? Okay, you only have three things a day to give energy to. High energy, meaning like your blood pressure is high. It better be good. It better be good. Okay, so this fuck, we're going to convert it to energy. I am not going to give energy to things that do not pay my bills. Let's start there. That's a lot. That is a lot of people. My magnesium levels have been so unbelievably low in the past. I searched high and low through many different magnesium supplements to take because I just, I knew I was low and I was trying to figure out ways to get it up. But most brands only have two to three forms of magnesium in them max. And there's seven different forms of magnesium. So Bioptimizer is the one that I found and it has all seven forms of magnesium in it. I take it right before bed. I literally just leave it on my nightstand next to a water bottle. I take it every single night two capsules. It helps me fall asleep, stay asleep, get good sleep. I wake up in the morning just feeling so much better. There's so many things that can get off in your body when you're lacking something and supplements. Finding a good solid supplement that hits all of it is phenomenal. And again, I was really, really low on magnesium. So being able to get all my magnesium levels back up to where they should be has been game changer for me. And then obviously getting a great night's sleep is also a benefit. So Bioptimizer does have a code for human two listeners. So you are going to go to bioptimizers.com slash human two. This will get you 10% off of anything that you order on their site. Again, the code is human two. That's all one word. I truly love this magnesium. I have been using it for quite a long time. After my dad passed, I was really struggling with sleep and I will continue to use this. Um, I have shared with them many times on Instagram and I can also link it again for you guys within the next week. So happy sleeping, happy getting your magnesium levels up. You will thank me. I promise. And why I say that is because there's so many things in my day where I just get so frustrated. I want to flick people in their forehead. I'm like, why would you say that behind a screen? Like, do you know that I'm human too? Like, do you understand that I'm literally human too? They don't care. But I'm also like, are you paying my bills? No. 
Do you pay my mortgage? No. Do I give a fuck about what you think about me and my nose? No. Do I give a fuck what you think about me and my husband's banter? No. So that fuck is not to be given to them. I'm going to put it back in my baggie and I'm going to say, okay, my husband wants to be in a bad mood and he's worried about something or stressed about something. That's something I'm going to give my energy to. That's where I'm going to sit down and be like, you know what? I'm not exhausted today because I've saved all my fucks. I've saved all my energy. Now I can sit down and figure out what's going on with my husband. But if I gave all my fucks away during the day to irrelevant shit, I'm going to be at the dinner table like, oh my God, I can't believe he's in a bad mood. Like, what are you in a bad mood for? Are you kidding me? I have no energy to give you. And then he's going to feel like, well, that sucks. Like, I really needed my wife today. But since you let all the trolls online bully you, like now you have no time for me and I do pay half the mortgage. Like, what are you talking about? So I really hope stuff like anything in this episode has helped you, but really start with sitting down and understanding the core of your feelings. Why are you feeling embarrassed? Why are you feeling guilt? Why are you feeling shame? Why are you feeling anything other than your core five? And when you can get to the core five and you can understand where it's coming from, you can start to address and look the issues directly in its eyes and say, oh, I'm not guilty. I feel sad or I'm not embarrassed. I just feel, I don't know, sad. Um, Then determining what makes you successful that day, writing down what is going to help me be successful. Then, second part to that, how can people help me? What does help look like to me so I can communicate help to them and vice versa? Um, Understanding that you are a target, you are a Hobby Lobby, you are a Pokemon star, whatever kind of store you associate as, they are able to close their doors. They are able to say, today I'm closing at 6 p.m. Today I'm taking Sundays off. Today I am kicking you out of my store because you are stealing from me. I don't care if it's a $7 candy bar and I'm donating millions to other things. I get to determine where I donate versus where people steal from. Um, So there's a lot that we went over. I know it was just like a big old jumbled mess, but I wanted to share those things with you guys. I, again, highly believe in therapy and um, I'll continue to share what I've learned over the course of my time in therapy. I'm praying When we make our move to Texas, I find a therapist that I love just as much as the one that I have now. Um, And yeah, so I will keep these. I know this like I'm not going to have a part two to this episode just because I wanted to, again, just like kind of blurt out what I've learned in therapy and what's been beneficial and really has stuck with me. And not only am I sharing it with just like my day to day life, but I'm also sharing with my friends and family when they're going through stuff. Um, So I wanted to share it with you guys. So I will continue to do so while I'm in my therapy journey of life. And I don't know. Again, we still haven't even gotten to like the grief and like the the triggering, traumatizing day of my dad's death. But I feel like I really needed to get a lot of other things that were really heavy off my chest first. Um, and I love you guys so much. Happy Thursday. If you're listening to this the day that it comes out, I will see you guys next week. Goodbye.